Hello people, and welcome back to part 19 of Ilos, our modded city skylines build. Hope you're having a wonderful day. How nice is this, right? <laughs> the lights slowly coming on across the slowly completing, a very nearly completed Mar Grid project, which is what we're going to be working on today. However, before we do that, we will have a little recap over some stream additions. And we came in and added in a new high school complex in order to satisfy uh, some high school education demand using some of the big parking lot uh, solar roofs things and a little sort of school bus stop in here as well. Also another connection onto the cycle highway network. So this is getting some nice use now too. And of course a little track and field stadium with some further sports additions and a little outdoor eating area as well next to the cafeteria. So thank you so much indeed for all the support across the streams and we also rounded out our big box designs uh, with some more residential over here which just wants a little bit of refining uh, with some of the natural eyeless brush also brought in a new alien coven a little lunch coven behind the walmart <laughs> all right they're really fun and we've also had um subscriber turtle the builder uh, make us some custom uh, billboards for the city which we have in now so we have overcharged parking so, I lost parking developers, you park, we charge, <laughs> which is really good. Really like this one. We also have an alien one, which has been added uh, over to last episode's Area 51 inspired airbase. Which, of course, is beware of aliens. If you spot them, don't call us. We all call you. Yours, Area 51. <laughs> They're really good. And then one final one over by the top of the mar grid, which is need a fence. Just point us where I lost fencing egg and associates. Call 1-800-FENCE IT. <laughs> which is great. Thank you so much, Turtle. Really appreciate those, dude. Um, you didn't have to do that, and it's such a nice little addition to have some custom billboards um, into the city. So if you guys have any more custom billboard ideas, uh, throw them down in the comments. Maybe we can get uh, Turtle to make us some more, if he's willing. However, in today's episode, what I want to address is this awkward stretch of land between the Mar grid frame and the highway. So this is going to be quite important for the overall build, because if we get this wrong, it's really going to create quite a harsh transition between the highway frame and the mar grid arterials. But of course, as always, when we're working with a mar grid project, we want to have a little look at Google Earth as to what's happening here in Phoenix. So let's head over there, shall we? And welcome back to real life Phoenix, everyone. So of course, this is what we've been working with for a big chunk of Ilos is taking inspiration from the mar grids around Glendale. And we're going to be rounding off a big chunk of the mar grid project today by taking inspiration with what happens between this very bottom arterial road and the highway. So let's have a little look as to what's going on here, shall we? So we have some condos. Again, we've seen these sorts of designs before, but there's varying different shapes and ideas we can take inspiration from here, uh, including the inclusion of uh, some pools behind them if we want to, alongside some grass and uh, some vanilla walking path it looks like here as well. So we can definitely get involved with some of that. Further down, we also have sort of a little commercial space here. All right, there's a billboard. Sort of smaller commercial lots with some nicer car parking. And also, we have a lots of empty space as well, okay? You know, this sort of area hasn't been overly developed yet. Maybe it will be in the future, but for right now, it's very much a sort of overgrown desert. So, again, it's vibes we can respect. Furthermore, there is also elementary school designs, which is great to take inspiration from. And then more condos. And then we actually do come across uh, some industry as we carry on. Uh, further east where we can see uh, again some assets that are essentially large warehouses <laughs> from the industry's dlc right look exactly the same and this this is right here this is pretty much a small warehouse as well you know lots of open courtyard that looks like some sort of transformer thing doesn't it some sort of electrical substation but again ideas to be had that we can bring back into city skylines so there we have it there's our inspiration for today's episode Let's talk about how we can transition from Mar Grid Frame into a highway and deal with some slightly more awkward spaces in City Skyline, shall we? So the first thing I want to do before we start building anything in this space is actually start to um, extend the big Mar Grid arterials that run through the frame, because of course these are now going to head um, across the highway and into various different builds for whatever starts to lie over this side of the highway, which will be a big chunk of the downtown stuff. So I'm just going to use my a dropper tool to pick up the road. Again, we're going to want to not do that. So let's grab move it and bring this pillar over slightly. We also want a traffic light at this junction now as well. Wonderful. And then again, this road can come across now. 
Okay, we'll prepare some bridges here today as well. We can actually have a very brief look as to what that would look like. Let's come in with a false elevation step here, okay? And we'll go for a 16 unit bridge. And then come back down to earth. And then you can now go over there. And whatever lies out that way will happen. Of course, make sure we do have tree anarchy off for a big chunk of this. And then any pillar inconsistencies, our friend Move It is going to be able to help to tidy up just a little bit. So now it's going to be really cool to start seeing uh, some layers of height developing across the highway as all these arterial frames now extend over it. It's going to be very nice indeed, isn't it? Let's carry on down the next one here now as well. It looks like we have the same road over this side. And we can do exactly the same thing. Come across again by a 16 unit bridge. And then falls back down to ground. And everyone's going to be happy. Move it. And we're winning. So I think that's kind of all the ones we need for the time being. This one's just a collector system here. We don't really need to extend that down, but we, we probably will at some point. Okay, fantastic news. So I want to start working on some of these condo designs that we're seeing and trying to position them sensibly against uh, the highway. So it looks like most of them, they're actually really not centered at all. They're quite erratic in the way they sit. So let's discuss some condo spice. We're going to be using the big parking lots for this, as always. Of course, units or increments of three are always handy with these. So pretty much so far, we've stayed kind of safe with sort of big parking lot roads, quite square and rigid, and sort of an asset either tied to the side of them. Or oh, there's another example we can find. There has to be one somewhere here, right? Yeah, here we go. So sort of just out the front of stores or, you know, slightly different designs with wrapping commercial around the side of them. I want to sort of do like a big sort of wrapped car park today where we can squeeze in lots of internal condos like we're seeing in Google Earth. So I'm going to start bringing out an anti-clockwise border road and let's go for a measurement of 15. It's going to be sensible in everyone's book, isn't it? So we'll do 15 and then we're going to do 30, okay, which is bold, but bear with me. I'm going to do another 30 up this way. And again, another 30, which is going to bring us right back in where we can now box this in here. So now we have the frame of the condo complex in. Uh, we can come in with a filler road by a distance of three units, okay? And we're going to want to do this in sort of the middle sections of each of these boxes right here. And we can just draw this one down to find the same node. And then likewise with this one as well. Let's go up by three. So now we have a little setup that looks like this. This is nice for me. I'm going to come back into the border roads now, and then we want to go anti-clockwise in the opposite direction. Of course, we're just going to keep our pavement roads on the outside. And then we can then hook these shapes in. So using this same format of sort of, again, sticking in measurements of three, and then drawing filler roads out of the side, we can start to create some much more interesting and sort of customised uh, car park designs. And indeed, you don't have to stick within a square. You can sort of go triangular, make it a little bit more circular if you want. But the same process of bringing the border roads and the fill roads out by three measurements and then sort of anti-clockwise is going to keep some nice interesting designs for your car parks if you are indeed using this mod. So we're going to come into our five car parks again. All right, we'll see where we can get these in. So that's going to be a nice time rate. And of course, where we do have some slightly awkward spaces, uh, the clipping remover is going to be fantastic just for getting rid. And then we can repeat this design in various different spaces now. Of course, don't forget to factor in a little bit of disabled action if that's indeed what you want to get involved with, which we certainly will today, of course. Uh, let's come again for another one of these five units. And then where we do want those disabled spots to appear, we can just manually place them in uh, like so. And then, of course, just come back and grab uh, the individual uh, parking spaces uh, like these ones. Okay. So this is nice. You can then bring these in. And of course, you do want to actually remember to uh, light the big parking lot mod roads because they do not come pre-lit. And again, there's a few little cute designs that we're all pretty fond of at this point, right? So you can include them within the spaces in the middle if you like, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to draw up a couple of little curbs either side, and then we can light them ourselves. I we'll definitely want to provide... Uh, there's actually one further down here, isn't there? I was just going to say more interconnectivity for the cycle highway, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely bring that into the condo complex. Maybe sandwich it between two condos. Be interesting to see how much use that actually gets, to be fair. So let's find a tree for our car park design, shall we? 
let's see what we fancy. I do have a number of options available to us now. I think these ones are quite nice, right? Go for this and just move it to drag it in and position it in there. I think I'm going to enjoy that. Get ourselves a light as well. And uh, let's go for. I think it's this one I like, isn't it? No, it's the other one. The one that has the orange thing on, isn't it? Yeah. A couple of little lights either side. Let's go ahead and grab uh, just trees and props and move it. Give this a little copy and paste, and then we are fine. Uh, to come and chill out in here. Dive into the world of Poppable Rico and find ourselves some condos that we want to use. Uh, we'll try and maybe go for these ones. Again, we can use a variety uh, as well today. So it looks like we can pretty much squeeze in uh, two condos next to each other. And that's going to kind of frame perfectly within these little car park patterns that we've got. But the car park design isn't finished yet because we actually want lots of uh, internal activity over this way. I want to bring in a uh, part life path as road. Okay. I'm going to be happy with that. Oh, it's like details of road itself, you know, with the little plant pots on the front. And then just feeding this road basically through the internal of the condo complex uh, will allow us to uh, start placing them. Let's just go ahead and start throwing a few down and then use and move it to essentially bend them into each other. Now, this does feel quite unnatural for me because it's not have them sort of lined up, but they do very much uh, just sort of spin off at mostly random angles. All right, let's have another one in here as well. Maybe bring this one ever so slightly up to the top to make sure we're not encroaching too much on the pathways. Okay, again, there's possibilities for walking pathway between here as well. So these are actual... Uh, walkable spaces. Let's dive into the world of pools because we do have a pool prop which we can drop in uh, around the back as well. Of course, give it a little bit of service painter to get rid of the sprites. That's delicious. Okay. And then we can just perhaps break off this road here now and bring it out at a different angle. This is going to allow us to start bringing in uh, some new shapes over here as well. And we can place a couple of them down and then just start to shift their angles a little bit. Like we're seeing in Google Earth, again, it does feel really unnatural to not have them sort of perfectly aligned with the road network, but they are very much shifted. Okay, and the part life path as road is going to keep them connected. So they'll still get services, they'll still get garbage and police collection and whatnot. Okay, and that's going to be an initial sort of concept and also bringing in some new uh, population into the city as well. And we've already got public transport network set up here too. Uh, we do have a metro line along here, I believe, don't we? Yes, we do. There is a metro stop here. And I don't think there's another one for quite a distance. Yeah, it's not until this tram transfer point over here, is it? So definitely a new metro station now, and possibly by the IKEA. At least over here, just so there's lots more interconnectivity now between cycle highway trams and the metro stations. Okay, oh, there we go. There's someone walking. That's nice to see, right? Fantastic. So, I'll go ahead and get my car packs in, and then we can carry on talking about some more condo designs here as well. Okay, so let's continue to play with some designs here. So what I really want to do is almost create kind of like a little shell of condos, right? That are going to encompass this little sort of central area that we're working with. Let's bring in another connection for this part my path is road now okay again that's going to be good for me we'll continue to place in some of these guys here as well we'll get them in roughly for right now and then try and respect each other's space where possible maybe bring this one further onto the corner this one a little further out too okay i'm going to create a little sort of courtyard for these three together Okay, be nice if we can get all the pathways to link up right, that would be appreciated. Of course, without encroaching too much on uh, the actual road itself. Okay, that's going to be sort of a nice little shell. It, I agree, it looks very sort of uh, rudimentary at the minute, but of course, it's going to be fixed up by painting in some of our sand, which of course, within this theme, is actually grass. So the grass people can rejoice. 
we are actually bringing in some green into the mar grid for once. <laughs> okay. Okay, so don't really like the pool here anymore. Let's come ahead and reposition this. Uh, we could actually go for a community pool, so it would be functional. Likewise, with an after dark pool as well. Um, some of these might be quite nice in here. I'll have to wait and see. So, of course, because we're actually using grass, we don't need the surface painter anymore, which is tremendously helpful. Okay, and I'm also seeing little gazebos in and around Phoenix as well. So, why don't we have a little look at a part life gazebo? Uh, definitely going to be welcome here and also functional because he is going to be uh, so close to a road that he will still register as sort of an actual park asset. So, we'll also head into the world of sun lounges, okay, and we can. Get some deck chairs here with the prop line tool, of course. Give them a little rotate with the 90 degree angle. And then just position a few of these around here. We will also search find it for gazebos because we do have some sort of cute little pre-made gazebos off the workshop that aren't from Part Life. Okay, and a couple of these are going to go a long way. Bringing in some vibes, right? And I don't think perhaps the people of this condo would be uh, averse to a smaller planter as well, perhaps holding sort of a, a larger live oak, if you like, just to provide a touch of shade during those uh, hot days. Okay, let's bring this over onto the corner. There we go. And then I think now just a little bit of a vanilla walking pathway between the assets where we can squeeze it in. Is going to be quite a welcome addition into the area. We will worry about that asset positioning slightly later. Okay, just things like giving the gazebo a little bit of a spin while still trying to maintain its road connection. And then maybe another little connection down and through here as well. And then before we know it, a little bit of greenery, a little pop of a tree in there too. And a little glimpse into the internal courtyard of one of these little condo developments. It brings a lot more personality compared to how we used to use these condos. Uh, for long time viewers of Ilos will remember that we kind of just stuck them in very stagnant rows with some part life pathways. And a little bit of parking out front. You know, this is a design we took from Phoenix as well. It's not anything totally unrealistic. But it's just not quite as interesting, is it? Sort of throwing that angles, including a little bit of sort of communal pool vibes, uh, really brings them a long way, in my opinion, anyway. So, and then now the car parks is completed around them as well. Uh, just fantastic. And I think we can further embellish the spice by bringing in some of our favourite sort of Ilos palms uh, in and around the complex as well. Definitely not averse to these uh, knocking around. Let's not also forget our. A little California short palm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> As always, flying away. Yeah, some of our little California short is in here too. Okay, they're always appreciated, right? Wonderful. And I think where we do have uh, some sort of courtyard here, a little bit of surface painter just between the assets is going to complement them uh, very much so. Okay, bring it around here as well if we want. Not encroach on the actual pathway itself though. Okay, and why don't we even get slightly sweaty with a part life bin? All right, let's go ahead and find one of the nice ones. Maybe just have a couple of little garbage bins out here. Possible bench as well. Let's have a little look. There's going to be lots of this little sort of detail today. It's going to be quite exciting for uh, the detail fangs amongst us. Yeah, definitely feeling one of the campus benches, I think. I do like these. Or little stone numbers. Maybe have a couple of these outside. Let's move that uh, bin over a little bit too. So, opportunities. Again, if you wanted to even come back in with another cute little tiny baby planter uh, within the middle of this courtyard and pick up one of your favourite trees, then of course it's always on the cards with City Skylines. And already just a touch of service painter some gentle cluster of prop and you have a much more interesting little courtyard where we're starting to finagle these shapes together. So it's nice isn't it? Oh there we go, someone's using the pathway as well. Going to the gazebo, very nice. Okay, it's going to be cute isn't it? 
So let's also give them a part life fast as well, because of course, let's not forget that we are playing City Skylines and they do uh, like parks. So we could also include a dog park within the compass as well. Not compass, complex is the more appropriate word, I think, isn't it? We'll just get rid of a tree uh, temporarily. Again, we can continue to use these same sort of angled vibes here to almost enclose uh, the dog park as part of the facility as well. I wonder how awkward it's going to be. I need to get the brush, don't I? <laughs> I desperately need the concrete brush. I will go and get it in today's episode, I think. I can't keep putting it off. Okay, let's come back and grab those taller palms too. Everyone's going to be having a nice time. And then just start scattering these around over here as well. Alright. Not too bad at all, I don't feel. I think I'm going to have a nice time here today. So that's one of our first uh, condo designs, right? Of course, wants a little bit more detailing, which we can use for our detailing time lapse, but uh, slightly more interesting ways of satisfying uh, some residential demand in city skylines. Okay, so just put in a little bit of uh, eye loss dry belt around the edge of it, and also some walkability options uh, from the frame back to the main road. And I also want to add in another uh, tram stop in here as well. So let's do that whilst we remember. Uh, we'll go for a nice little spot right here. Okay. So, lots more public transport for these guys to uh, come and go from the area now. And indeed, we're not really getting uh, that many people driving out of this road now, which is good. Uh, lots of people choosing to take this bus stop uh, over here, which is getting some nice use on the little pink buses. And road cactus, let's delete that. There we go. Fantastic. So, I think I'm relatively happy with this for the time being. Okay. Cool. So, start discussing a new design over here now, this time for some commercial. So we're going to come into uh, parking lot roads this time. I think I'm feeling uh, some poorly maintained service road, uh, purely for the aesthetic that it's not very well maintained. Obviously, <laughs> that didn't really need explaining, but hopefully you can see where I'm coming from. So uh, as I actually think we'll just come out of the arterial with the parking lot road itself. And let's go for 15 units for right now. Okay, we're going to be happy with that. Then let's start placing in some assets. So I already know I'm going to want some sort of auto parts shop here, okay? Or any sort of car repair place, right? I'm going to have one of these in here. I know we've also got the uh, ready to roll, which we used uh, over in the rural town. And again, I'm going to give this a little uh, shift around and bring it alongside here. Again, I'm going to be happy with that aesthetic for the most part, I think. Maybe finagle him over a touch, and then we can grab this parking lot again and bring it around. Now, I'm a very big fan of these sort of little curves when you do sort of bend these roads around each other. And we'll make sure that we're at a similar distance here. So what was this one? We're at 15. Let's bring this one down by 15 again. Okay. Again, we're seeing a lot of uh, car parking around these sorts of spaces too. And then we'll do another one just up to the corner. And we don't want to connect back into the road there either. Alright, so we can wrap again some uh, more car parking around the back of it. Then I'm going to bring out a little service road here. I think I'm going to be happy with that. I think I actually do just want to uh, perhaps grab these nodes at this point and just give ourselves a little bit of breathing room between that frontage network and the arterial. Gonna be on board with that. Let's have a look what else we can place here. Maybe a little Dollar Tree, okay? And start to snap some of these assets together. I think an Office Depot as well. Again, important that we keep checking for more angles. Indeed, likewise with our uh, condo complex as well. Are we happy with how it sits against the highway? I think very much. You can see a lot of palms <laughs> across the like now. Especially as they sort of silhouette against the, the blue sky, right? Hopefully we are using enough of the local flora. Okay. This isn't too bad, is it? Definitely some surface paints are in here as well. At least just to flush out in the spaces where we have the concrete with the commercial buildings. Now I definitely want to bring in lots of chain link fencing as well, because 
There's just something that feels quite natural about the US Southwest and chain link fencing. It's only going to eat into our prop count as well, because of course these aren't uh, being taken up with nodes. Let's grab both of these and just slide them back a little bit. Then again, I think lots of our favourite sort of eyeless overgrowth around here now. Definitely lots of our sort of dried uh, brown grasses. Such a little brown weed just poking through uh, some of the fences as well, where it is starting to come a little bit overgrown. Now let's move up a tree size. Definitely feeling some short palms in this area as well. Okay, a couple of these in. And then definitely some of our favourite saguaros in order to satisfy the Arizona locals who are undoubtedly watching what's going on here today. So there's a little pallet between the corner area of the commercial, alright? I think I'm going to enjoy that. I don't think I'm going to hate the addition of, yet again, a touch more chain link just around the back of this area here. Not everywhere. I'm happy to have some spaces that aren't totally fenced in. Drag all our props and just slide this over a touch. And everyone can just settle in around the new fence boundary now. Very happy with that. Let's go ahead and get some car parks in so people can actually uh, make use of the spaces here. We will, of course, uh, save a little bit of disabled action up and out front, although maybe not uh, outside of the sort of because cars would clearly pull in and out here, right? Let's bring this one over just a touch so the tires aren't sort of encroaching. There we go. Let's turn off our snapping and then we'll go for spaces out front where they can uh, park disabledly. Why don't we go for some of these angled car parks for once? I feel like I very, very rarely use them. I want to make sure that we do bring uh, some power through. And again, our rural power line uh, sets are going to be uh, very much appreciated in terms of actually decorating this area as well, especially as they kind of flow past the commercial lot here. And again, just a little splash of walkability with a vanilla dirt path is really going to help just keep people moving around. Possibly another cycle junction off here as well. Alright, and then again, a gentle splash of our favourite Ilos dry brush, which is our saguaros and sort of dry grasses uh, in and around this. And then we do want to remember to sort of respect that big empty desert space in some places, alright? We don't just want packed in uh, developments on this side. Uh, we do want to bring in some just open desert vibes. Maybe a little bit too many saguaros around here, actually. I need to amend that uh, brush so it's not quite so uh, cactus heavy. But otherwise, well, look how busy the little metro stations now. Lots of people picking up the cycle highway, too. Big fan of that. <laughs> it's great seeing them cycle around, isn't it? Is people waiting for the tram stop too? Is, how's this one doing over here? Yeah, this isn't too bad. I don't know, it gets busy as we zone up some of these areas here as well today. Very nice. But even just driving down this sort of southern bit of arterial frame now. All these little developments are just helping, aren't they? Helping to decorate each side of the road network, which is equally important as decorating the builds themselves. So let's come to our uh, next design now, which is going to be a little elementary school, because we do have uh, some elementary school demand. Now we do have a little elementary complex here, so we don't really want to place it uh, that close, if at all possible. So why don't we possibly have a look at one of these frames uh, over here. So again, I think I'm going to want to use uh, parking lot service road as the initial entrance, because there's nothing massively exciting in the run-up to them. So we'll go for 10 units initially, possibly 15. And then I want to do uh, some of our little uh, car parks here again today. So we'll make sure we're using uh, the same road, which is uh, the little US one lane one. And we'll do a little four deep roundabout. There we go. We want to make sure that uh, parking is actually off because I think it's enabled on these ones. Yeah, there we go. Don't want to get caught out by a biffer again. <laughs> I'm not using, or be using uh, roundabout roads that have parking on them. It's not not a good time. 
And then why don't we have a look at a couple of 40 meter parking lots here. Could possibly be a little big, but they will get used over this side as well. And then we'll come on to a road guideline snap as we approach this roundabout here. And then we can connect in uh, with service road either side. Always a nice idea to be given sort of two entrances and exits into the car park. We could also bring up a connection there as well. There's no reason why not really. It's going to help people get in and out of the complex a little bit easier. Oh, just look at this. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so easily distracted by all these little tight frontage networks that I've developed around the Margrid now. Especially now it's all alive and walkable, right? Oh, <laughs> it's so nice. I hope you're enjoying Ilos as much as me, everyone. It's, um, it's a very easy city to look at, I think, isn't it? I hope so, anyway. I hope that vibe's coming across. Let's come ahead and grab uh, a touch of node controller. And I think 14 meters is my favorite here, isn't it? Yes, we will leave that one there, yes. No node controller here. Yeah, that's going to be grand. Let's come ahead and find ourselves an elementary school. We are playing with the haze, which I haven't really used yet, to be fair. So uh, I think we're going to go for this one. And we're going to place it and try and use the curvature of the roundabout almost as though it's sort of a part of the entrance itself, if that makes any sense at all. I think, again, I'm going to bring in... I'm actually feeling maybe we should be using the, the smaller parking lots here, actually, on second thought. Yeah, I think we will, because if we do that, we can actually get some more in. Let's also grab ourselves a football field, or indeed soccer for our American friends. Let's see which we want to use. We do have a couple of options, don't we? Um, the high school soccer field, which is quite a nice one. It's obviously not staying here. Um, or we can use the football field one. Which I think is... A little more impressive, isn't it? So let's go for that one. Yeah, we'll use this. So we can also see again in Google Earth that the sort of road actually wraps around at the entire complex here. So again, it's a vibe that we'll bring in and it's going to help us uh, sit relatively sensibly against the highway as well. Uh, for which they actually do just want to do uh, a little bit of work with Move It and Network Multi Tool. So we're going to grab all of these nodes here. And we're going to set them to the height of the uh, sunken highway over this side. Yeah, let's do it this side instead. So we'll grab all the nodes up until that point. Uh, Control and H will allow us to do the height shortcut. That's going to be grand. Let's make sure we factor in this little elevated uh, arterial frame as well before we carry on. Yep, yeah, and then go back to ground. Not on that angle though. There we go, and we are a little way too short. <laughs> way too short there, actually. Cars are colliding with it, but we can do a couple of things here instead. So maybe let's just bring up at the tips of these two nodes just a little bit. Not forgetting the middle node as well. There we go, just add a little bit of elevation. And that should be enough just to get most cars through. And again, any pillar unfriendliness can just be fixed off with move it as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Not happy with this though, so this is where uh, Network Multi Tool, when we come to Network Multi Slope, we're going to go from here to here. Slope down for me please, and then this side as well. Wonderful. Cool. So I have also been thinking about lining this highway with keys. Even though that doesn't really happen in Phoenix, it's very much sort of left to open desert either side. But it's going to destroy my node count. It does look really good, and we will do it in the downtown stretch of highway. But I can't do it everywhere. It's just going to eat way too many nodes. <laughs> we have to be careful. Okay, wonderful. Let's have a little football field here. Okay, I don't think I'm totally against the inclusion of uh, some baseball, either. Again, remembering that we do want to uh, paint the underneath of the baseballs in certain themes, because they do allow the grass sprites to come through otherwise. And again, just because we're within sort of a dedicated school complex, we probably don't even need to use service painter, to be honest. 
Um, some of the grass is going to be uh, most welcome, especially around this side as well. We also have this elementary school playground, which again is going to function as a park asset, but something that I'm on board with. And why not a little custom few candy park as well that we stole from Oridon? I think I'm going to be on board with that. It's going to be nice. Let's grab some surface painter. We're going to go for our gravel and we can sort our roundabout in the middle as well. Feels like it might be too much. I don't know, maybe this is like a posh sort of snooty private school, maybe. No offence to anyone that did go to private school. I'm sure you're all incredibly well educated. Let's go ahead and find a little bush. Maybe a little red one, okay. Let's go for our circle. Tool as well with prop line tool. Then we'll grab just trees with movement. And then we can just bring these in to be a little more sensibly focused. The fountain is certainly not central. There we go. Alright. Maybe just some little bits of overgrowth that I've perhaps developed because you know, the local groundskeeper hasn't quite been on form. Or indeed abducted by aliens is more likely an eyeless. Not bad, but we can already see sort of a little school complex beginning to form now. And then within the middle of the car parks, I think I'm feeling at least one of the spaces to be concrete. And we can get some lights in here. Indeed, some walking pathway as well. And um, if you do want this to be a walkable space, then it's possible. Again, I need to start being careful of my node count, so I'm going to exclude it, but a little vanilla walking pathway here will allow people to transition between the two areas as though it is an actual sort of walkable concrete space. And I think against the main road as well, and then we'll let sort of the natural grass and sands develop inside of the complex. Fantastic, there we go. So some very brief and simple and easy elementary campus designs. Again, all things we see on Google Earth that can be allowed to help inspire our cities, right? And of course, we can even have a look just how much demand we're satisfying with our elementary school. Yeah, that's going to throw us over the threshold. High school's in the green now. We should be well in the green with university. Um, not as much as we thought, actually. Maybe um, a little bit of death over here as well, by the looks of it. That's not too much of a problem. Um, but yeah, not as much university demand as I thought we would have. Um, Possible second incoming campus design with that in mind then. There are some very nice uh, sort of schools of technology in Phoenix that we can take inspiration from for perhaps the trade school campus when we come to do that. Alongside all these very custom designs, there is also some sort of generic uh, Phoenix suburbia that we have come to appreciate over uh, the months we've been building ILO. So a lot of these designs can now start to pack into uh, the Margrid frame. And we'll set ourselves up a little uh, sort of custom theme here. So we're going to call this the Nika Caceres Park. I'm sorry if I'm heavily butchering that name, but thank you for all your patron support. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Please do let me know if I'm not. Uh, but either way, we'll put on our classic custom theme here of American Eclectic with rural US res and also the single story US res, which are custom themes we've used in Islas before. So again, we can continually satisfy a bunch of this residential demand by zoning in here now. This is going to keep everyone nice, and of course, let's not forget sort of general parks and services to keep everyone occupied. Uh, why don't we go for a bouncy castle maybe near, near the school? We very rarely use this asset. I feel like it actually might be better served over there, though. Yeah, let's go for that one. And then... I'm actually squeezing a couple of these here. I don't think that can be refused, can it? If it fits, we sit. So that is the law. And I mean, like, law as in life guidelines to follow, not backstory of the city. Right. Maybe a little sort of curvy number in here. And I could bob these off, but I think I'm happy with a sort of small green tree in this area. Why is there a shipping container there? that part of the playground? <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it's like a soft play or something inside it. Or if you just can't be arsed looking after the children, you can stick them in the shipping container for the afternoon. Alright. Or Alice Law. <laughs> that, that is actual law. 
I mean, we're coming up to 53,000 people. It's kind of crazy to think, right, there's 53,000 people pretty much in the Margrid now, if we're ignoring the Mehmet Bariskin fields out this way. It's a lot, right? <laughs> 53,000. A lot of people. And we're not even hit downtown yet, either. Node count is screaming. <laughs> it really is. Okay, hello train traffic. What are you guys doing here? Wait, what's up with you? Hmm? You're okay, Mr. Train? Is there a reason you're going so slow? You know what? I think I did actually see... Oh. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> How far is this going back? What the hell? Why? <laughs> oh, no. Why is that happening? There is miles of train traffic. What's up? You've been fine all series. This guy is doing like three miles an hour. Do you want to move? What's wrong with you? Stop. No, not first person. Delete. Go away. Yes, delete all your sort of sub characters as well. Please leave. So when the trains do actually move at the correct speed, the train traffic normally is okay. Yeah, see, there we go. It's just that one train. This is going to cause road traffic now as well. This is what I was worried about playing with road crossings in the Margrid frame was running into this issue. Okay, yeah, it just seems to be that one train. Yeah, I think I've seen, as I was saying, Biffa has had a problem with slow trains. I did see it in his most recent episode. Yeah, it's murdering the Margrid traffic now. Because of the backup that's been caused by it. Okay, we'll keep our eye on it. Come back and check later to make sure it's all cleared up. Because there's a ton. <laughs> there's a ton of trains waiting to come into the city. Dear me. Okay, we'll have to keep our eye on that. If the trains are going to start moving super slow for no reason. Definitely going to want to move this. I mean, we've not really built this yet, to be fair. But this uh, train cargo station can't sit on the main line like this. So we're going to have to knock it back onto a separate one. Uh, like we've done with the intercity system here. Or should we catch some walking porn while we're here? Hello, tourists. <laughs> Welcome to Hylos. Yes, all go to the transport hub, please. There we go. Just ignore the train traffic, guys. And the crippling road traffic. This is why we're all here, right? <laughs> this is what everyone wants. Oh, so satisfying to watch. There is a short on the channel of this, by the way, if you want to see a little montage of it. Okay, yeah, the diagonal slip roads are clearing now anyway. You guys aren't really moving now. It seems to be these little custom trains that are causing the issue. The ones off the workshop. This possibly wants relocating away from the train junction as well. Are we clearing the backlog, I wonder? Yes, it is. It is getting shorter. Okay. It's been fine for the duration of Idols. I don't know why there's so many trains. There is a lot, isn't there? Okay, maybe when we bring in some sort of downtown freight processing and downtown intercity stations, and um, not all trains that come into the map will be barreling through this central line. Alright, so the train backlog has finally cleared. And now the Margrid starts to behave itself again. If not for someone dying at the Shell petrol station. Yeah, okay. So just unfortunately the way the game works with rail crossings, the AI doesn't really like them that much, even though they are everywhere in Phoenix. Uh, we are just going to have to keep our eye on that, right? Yeah, so it does clear when the trains aren't just being ridiculously stupid. Uh, again, for which I think I want to come into some uh, industrial vibes now. So let's start coming down this way. Again, any pillar nastiness, tidy up with, move it. And then let's bring this down. So I definitely want to play with Industries DLC warehouses because we can use them to stock uh, commercial goods for the local commercial, of course. And again, orientation is everything, isn't it? So let's come into some of our industrial road. We'll come ahead and grab a small industry road. And there should be enough room, I think, to squeeze it in. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect, to be fair. Again, we'll treat it as an initial frame. It's going to be incredibly annoying not having that linked together, isn't it? So let's just do it from this side instead. There we go. So, big fan of the large warehouses. 
Okay, it's going to sit against the highway nicely too. Everyone's having a nice time. Uh, you will store uh, commercial goods, although to be fair, we do have um, a factory over here. It's a problem. It's definitely this Genesis commuter train, isn't it? It's just not moving. I think I need to break the connection here, don't I? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Let's amend this here. Um, let's allow all this industrial traffic to enter this side of the area instead. And then I'm going to kill this road connection here. I think that's what's probably causing the issue. Because that is very sort of three nodes to have together. And we know how the AI behaves when nodes are very close. And it really doesn't like it at all. That's cleared now, though. All right. We are getting massively distracted by train traffic, but it's important that we don't let that get any worse. I do like the rail yard as well. Nice. <laughs> I do like it. All right, back to the industrial board anyway. Let's stop getting distracted for a minute if we can. And then we're going to bring uh, the road network around here now. Probably connect back into the frame over there as well. So we'll come into uh, a little small warehouse too. Let's go for a couple of these. Looks like we can possibly squeeze them in uh, just about back to back. And of course, these are going to help decorate the industrial vibes as well once they do actually fill. And um, because the small warehouses will actually kind of fill up with produce and resources as the trucks arrive into them. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, that is what we were doing, weren't we? We were checking what the factory wanted. Uh, animal products, crops, and flour. Well, I think we can store uh, flour here. Let's do that. We can also store animal products. We do need a silo to store crops. Which, I'm not against a silo being out here. Is it a little bit too country? Well, I think it wants its own sort of road network to respect it, right? Let's complete the frame around the back of the small warehouses and then come into perhaps a rural road and then just use a little bit of sand action as we come down onto this frame here. Let's use a curved road as well. Go. Cool. Let's have this sat here and drop in uh, a little silo, perhaps on an angle. Definitely complement the silo by continually marking out its sort of colored uh, surface painter. A little bit of chain link fencing is going to be nice around here too. Uh, I don't think I'm totally against the inclusion of some uh, vanilla sort of zoned industry. Almost like a little bit of storage or admin. Uh, again, for the silo. I think a little bit of ILOS dry belt around that will help also. Uh, with, yeah, again, some of our chain link fencing from the Natural Disasters DLC. Bring this in alongside and probably around the back of the industrial complex as well. And let's not forget to continually splash out with the ILOS dry belt. I'm just hoping to see a little sort of industrial complex now within the frame and start to settle in a little bit. Uh, for the other ones, you will just hold uh, commercial goods because there's lots of big box around here as well. So that's going to keep everyone stocked up, right? Wonderful. Again, I think I'm really feeling uh, the addition of perhaps some large warehouse spice over here as well, combining them um, with Move It where possible. I wonder how easy it is to kind of blend two of these boys together with Move It. Definitely doubles it up, doesn't it? Because that's literally what it's doing. It's doubling the length. Is <laughs> Again, not that that needed explaining. Yeah, I'm on board with that. Definitely want to remove the palms. I know they're not encroaching. They should be okay. Yeah, and you will store zone goods. So because we're kind of on the subject of industry, I'm definitely not against the inclusion um, of a unique factory around here. But we do need to consider which one we actually want. This is very nice. I don't use this one enough, to be fair. What's it called? Pernu Apparel. Yeah, a little clothing factory. It's not the only option available too, as though the, the electronics is enormous, isn't it? Yes, that's too big for here. Industrial steel plant, maybe? <laughs> right next to some houses. 
appropriate unit building placement. Oh, lemonade. No, this is the modular house, isn't it? You're also quite tasty as well, if I remember rightly. And it comes with palms, although they're, they're gross vanilla palms, though. We'll switch them out for Isla's palms. Little boxes, modular homes. Also a contender. Let's continue to burn through our money by placing and deleting endless unique factories. Uh, the lemonade as well. You know, when life gives you lemons, turn them into carbonated juice and drink their souls. Not feeling the lemonade factory as much, though. Um, probably the modular house, I think. Yeah, I think we'll go for the modular house, boy. If we can actually align this with the cycle network, it's got that very flat edge against it, which is really going to help decorate the main arterial frame here, too. Okay, it's going to fill out a nice big chunk of industrial design over this side, too. Which, again, is always appreciated, isn't it? I think it is. So, let's drag move it, and we're going to bring him ever so slightly across. Although, do we want... Yeah, maybe the other side. How about if we spin you around? How do we feel about that? Yeah, let's bob away those horrendous palms, like we said. Yes, just disappear. And again, just opportunities for Surface Painter to flesh out these consistent textures that come in with some of the new buildings. Let's give ourselves sort of a harsh line to follow. Because we just happen to be on the northwest-south divide here. There's one more palm that needs to be bobbed away. And then again, just touches of desert chain link fencing are going to be mega for detail in this sort of area. Especially bringing it down here as well, separating it away from the little commercial development that's sat here now. Okay. We do have to be careful here, though. There is uh, possibilities for industrial traffic to grow in this space because there's six warehouses and a unique factory now so we will have to monitor that situation and um, we need to be want to connect back into the arterial frame at this point um it could be worth having a one-way connection you know yeah how about we make this a one-way system you can only enter the industrial area via this side removes the need for a traffic like them that should also just help siphon off a little bit of pressure from this junction from all the industrial traffic that will eventually bleed through there as well and you know we're, we're kind of hammering home these vibes now of how phoenix at least for me very strangely moves from somewhat nice desirable condo locations to open desert to relatively run down kind of nasty looking commercial into extremely heavy industrial spaces um, all within essentially like a mile of each other when you look at the Margaret frame. You know, it's uh, it's very unusual. At least for me as a person who lives in England anyway. Okay, so I think before we head into a detailing town maps today, uh, we'll discuss another condo complex. Uh, this time, factoring in our friends that maybe don't have enough RAM to download some condo assets, or just sort of don't really like downloading assets anyway. Uh, let's have a little chat about what we can do with some of the Green City stuff, because it will uh, work very nicely in here indeed. Let's come out again with another Black Asphalt Drive route, okay? And then we're going to stick to pretty much the same measurements as last time, 15 by 15 frames. Okay, and let's line up some Green City's assets, shall we? So, there's a couple of different possible combinations here, and um, for those that didn't see the live stream, uh, where we detailed the lakefront over here, Got these ones in right, you can pair them so you mirror the stairs either side of an alleyway. Came anyway, up with some of these designs, these are quite nice. So you can totally run with this idea if you want. Many different Green Cities possibilities, also had a repeated pattern in here, and for fans of the Noobs Guide series as well, uh, you would have seen that in this week's episode. Uh, we ran with some organically zoned, uh, sort of flats, but again, kind of falls into the condo vibe, right? So I'm going to run with uh, a couple of these ones here. They're three by three level ones. I'm going to place four of them down. And what this is going to do is allow us to uh, finagle them into a position and we can do some uh, relatively interesting things with. So with each one, I'm just going to hold that alt and give it a little uh, spin and twist and then just adjust uh, the curvature 
of the inside of the building to complement one another. Okay, we can line these up. Same again with this one. Again, making sure we hold Alt. When we're doing a move at spin, it's going to make sure that we stick on that uh, 45 to 90 degree angle snap. So even now, we can see that we're just creating a really nice little pattern uh, just by respecting the curvature of each of these assets, right? You can adjust them in whatever sort of sizes and orientations that you like. You can leave a little more space and factor in uh, a plaza in the middle, which I think is what I'm going to do here today. Once you have them in, make sure that you have a building selected with Move It, and then you can simply just copy and paste this pattern into a number of different positions. And then also these ones here, the level 1 uh, 3x4s, do work very nicely um, when they're mirrored from each other. You can just slide them into position with Move It and come up with some very nice, almost Tetris vibes from the bird's eye view here, okay? So it's essentially like you're making new, unique residential buildings. Um, especially with the Green City stuff is super flexible for these sort of uh, fusing pawn ideas. Putting all different things together, right? Lots of different possibilities here, especially with um, the over ones as well. Now you can see how these piece together you know, near perfectly. We can possibly even get one of these in as well. You know, you don't have to do a pattern of four. If you want to break the pattern, then you can. And just twist them into position like this, all right? You can also use Bob to realign the props if you want. And then leave maybe sort of like a pool. Uh, very much like we did in the condo complex over here. Um, either side of them. Okay. And again, if you're uh, not happy with the colour matching, uh, select the mismatch colour come into your move it toolbar. And then just hit reset objects and eventually it will land on the same colour as the other ones. And you can have like a flush uh, new unique building now, right? So I'm a big fan of that one. I'm going to keep that design. So let's refine this design here a little bit. Let's spread everyone out and see uh, what we want to focus everyone around. I do believe a simple uh, part life plaza will actually be more than adequate. But we will just have a little search through, uh, move, uh, find it and see what we can what with indeed the sunken plaza might also be uh, quite a good shout for this one and of course we'll bring in um, a part life path as road in order to keep it connected so you know, it receives its services and whatnot and then really if you want to sort of align the props out the front of the building with the corners of these little planters i think i can definitely appreciate this aesthetic right and of course, we'll do the little uh, reset uh, buildings with, with Move It. Let's grab both of these. Uh, so let's just grab one at a time, actually, in case the other one shifts around. There we go, yeah. So we just want the white versions. Imagine sort of the white cladding will be appropriate here in such uh, intense Arizona heat. Okay. I'm happy with that. Indeed, <laughs> they don't even care about the connection. I think they will just walk back into, but of course we do want to actually fix that. So let's go ahead and grab all of this now, and we can sort of save this as a design. As we begin to configure uh, something of a road network around it. And again, I'm thinking that uh, the part life path as roads in order to hold the internals of the condo complex are going to be the most appropriate. Right. I do also need to switch these out for the versions with ends, so we don't always have to have a traffic light. Same thing's happening here as well. We will change that. And I think I'm happy to cluster a couple of little uh, service assets around here too. Things like uh, perhaps a community pool. I'm definitely happy to have the chain link fencing up against this side of the road as well. It's always appreciated, isn't it? And then perhaps a child healthcare centre in here too. And we can maybe start switching up some angles so we're not snapped perfectly onto the angle of the road. Bit of service painter just to help flesh out those sort of internal plaza vibes and again a walking pathway uh, through here back to the arterial is going to allow these spaces to become a little bit more functional now the front of the plaza is actually this way now how close does he have to be yeah he is very nearly within his threshold isn't he so we can uh, save the need actually um, for a part like pathas road but it could also be an aesthetic that I'm quite keen on having wrap around the plaza, but I, th I think we're going to leave it. Okay, and then 
So this guy right at the back here, he's not going to be connected. He will suffer from crime and sort of general service issues. But we can just have a little flanking road on either side. Use the building spawn points and just uh, shift him back ever so slightly. Just towards this road here. Not too bad, I don't think. I think I'm generally happy with the, the concept right now. Again, we can drag everything we want. And now just repeat the pattern on this side as well. Any inconsistencies that you're not happy with, of course. Don't forget your reset objects. Just make all these buildings nice and white. So they're going to be reflecting the heat. Not slow cooking the Alos residents alive. So you can definitely get on board with some kind of condo apartment vibes here. Not using the base game assets, or at least the vanilla game assets anyway. Right, and then lots of service painter in here. Uh, and again, using the vanilla uh, walking pathway is always going to help add a little bit more purpose to these spaces that you develop. And um, if you actually want them to be sort of functional and walkable, then it's of course always an option, isn't it? Let's come back into these buildings now. And again, trying to continually respect the themes and ideas that we're seeing in Google Earth. I don't want everything to be so rigid and snapped to a 90 degree point. Um, let's see if we can start bringing in uh, some different shapes and sizes here, especially with these patterns. Uh, the power line is now very much in the way. I do want it as decoration though, so we will have to find a spot to relocate it, but it's not the priority for right now. Don't think I'm going to hate that. Let's come in again and grab a part life path as road. And we're going to come off all our snapping here and go for a little freeform number. Again, this little road connection nearby to all these apartments now. Is going to allow everyone to stay connected, which is what we want to do. Equally, I think we probably want to rethink the position of the child healthcare center now as well. Let's align the hedges with the main road. And we will bring in, again, another park road to function as a serviceable connection for these areas. Okay, and now within these spaces here, this is perfect opportunity. Uh, to start developing some uh, internal car parks for green cities development to make use of. Road length will be helpful here too. Bring that out. And then throw down some of our favourite car parking. Okay, let's go for one of those. And then we'll switch out for some disabled spaces at the bottom. Lots of service painter. Indeed, a fair amount of prop detailing today within these sort of concrete plazas. Uh, lots of benches. Possible fountains, planters, all our usual favourite spices at this point, right? Then before we know it, just by finagling a few little comboed green cities assets around, uh, we can create, in my opinion, a little bit more of an interesting condo development than using some of the workshop assets. So just a little bit of move it, and the green city stuff can uh, dramatically improve the look of your high-density residential designs. And we should now continually see uh, this little public transport convergence point get dramatically busier. Uh, especially with all the addition of this high density residential around here too. Okay guys, well that does feel like a wonderful place for a detailing time lapse. We have lots of weathered kind of old decals to come and bring in around here just to age this concrete a little bit. Indeed lots more open empty desert space with the Ilos dry belt to be factored in as well. Uh, also continued sort of path and prop detailing in and around all of our condo complex designs today. Uh, just to help bring these very sort of flat plazas to life a little bit more. And I might also ban uh, pedestrian vehicles from this main road here too. They will want access to the car park though, so uh, we will have to bear that in mind. Um, add a couple of new cycle highway exits into the new suburb developments that are starting to happen over here now. Especially near the school and the new residences. And I think I will also bring in some one directional slip ramps uh, onto some of these new arterial bridges that have come into uh, the city. So maybe have an exit point up this way. And then likewise, maybe down this way, do another little exit point. And um, just so it serves as another little point of highway access uh, for the mile grid. Because it is very important that we keep the traffic moving around here. And I think the train, train problem has cleared up now. Yeah, traffic's returned to normal. Uh, that was definitely an issue with that train junction here, it seemed like. 
Um, that was definitely causing that. They're going straight through now and everyone does seem to be behaving. So traffic fix with that. <laughs> Slowly. All right. Let's detail up the awkward space between the highway and the mark grid. And we'll be right back. Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help me grow and bring more people to the channel. If you really want to help support the work, there are links down to Instant Gaming, Merchandise and Patreon below. The Instant Gaming link is definitely worth a look. Super cheap codes for all of your favourite games and I do get a little kickback for each purchase. So thank you very much if you do end up using my link. 
really happy with today's edition. Lots of different builds coming together with some more generic suburbia. A really cool elementary school complex. A couple of little condo designs. Some rundown commercial and of course some new industrial expansion as well. I've also added in a couple of uh, slip lanes onto the new arterial bridges. Uh, not always going omnidirectional. We are having kind of different slip lanes. Very much like we did in the very northern point of the Mar grid. You know, you can only access certain sides of the highway from different sides, but there are also alternate connections nearby as well. And it's really helping giving just a little bit more highway access for the Mar grid, which of course is really important. The trains do seem to have cleared up now. It was, I think it was definitely that junction um, in the train yard that was causing them to back up. Just too many nodes too close together and the AI had an aneurysm. We will more than likely finish the Mar grid project on Saturday's live stream with some generic suburbia expansion. Uh, that needs to happen over in the east of the grid. And then after that, we can possibly do the downtime road network frame episode next week. We'll see. <laughs> we also need a power plant build and some water treatment and garbage processing as well. I don't know. See how teasy I'm feeling. <laughs> but of course, there was a ton of detail you guys wouldn't have seen uh, throughout the detailing time lapse. So please do hang around for the outro touch and check out the new additions as they integrate into the Margrid. And of course, some wonderful nighttime spices as well. But I will shut up and we'll leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.